What's going on, mother truckers, man? I've been hanging out with my guy, man, and it's been so awesome. And you know, please introduce yourself, brother. Uh, Philip Couch from Couch Trucking. You know, um, Philip. You know, I see all these cool trucks, but what makes yours different than everybody's here? What makes mine different ever from anyone else's? You know, it's always been about Peterbilt and Kenworth, and, did, and we decided to go with the Freightliner uh, 99 Classic, uh, something different than what most people would go with. Uh, the reason we went with the Freightliner Classic, this is the first truck that I ever bought. This is what started my company. So we built this truck for us, and really? we built it for the people. I love it. So this was your first truck? This is my first truck I ever owned. And how many trucks you got now? We got a total of 10 now. You got 10 trucks? Yes, sir. We got 10 trucks now. And and out of all of them, this was the first one? This was the first one. Freightliner Classic. Freightliner Classic, sure was. Hey, for all the Freightliner Classic lovers out there, definitely give this a thumbs up. You know, um, so how long you been trucking? I've been trucking since 2002, uh, and then I've been in my own business now. This this month here makes our third year anniversary as far as Couch Truck and LLC. You know, for people that have the dream, let's, let's paint the picture. A company driver, uh, maybe a solo owner operator. You know, what what's what's the what what's the path that you take? Like, what's the tips and advice for someone that wants to get to your level of 10 trucks? Because a guy that's a company driver, he can't even think of himself having one let alone 10. You know, what's the best advice for that guy? The best advice I can give that guy is, is don't go out here and just jump into it and go buying trucks and try to be somebody that you're not. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a company driver. I started out myself as a company driver and I just built my time up because, you know, there's times that we're just not ready for it. And when the time's right, uh, just start with your one truck, lease it on, and as time goes on and you see that you can manage and maintain that company, then that's the time to grow. Don't try to over outdo, but just because the man down the street have, might have 15 trucks, don't worry about him. Don't worry about the man on the other side. Be you. Concentrate on what you're trying to build and what you're trying to do. And if you do that, you'll be just fine. Just take small steps. I love that, man. So let, let's show him around this truck right here, this Freightliner right here. All right. All right, what's your favorite part about this classic? Man? My favorite part about this classic is the Bible verse that's inside in the floor. Uh, that's my most right, best let's part. Let's go to it. Let's go to uh, it. It's up here inside. Uh, you can read it off. What's it, what does it say? <clears throat> Let the people know. It says, uh, Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Tell me what that means to you. As a young Christian, I was struggling about my past. Uh, most people don't know if they look at me and they say, hey, he's a great guy. But you know, it was what happened up to this point made me who I am. Uh, when I was young, I got in trouble. I done things that wasn't right. Almost served 30 years in the penitentiary. And the only thing that saved me from going to that was Christ, Jesus Christ. And, you know, and, and then getting saved and then, you know, I was struggling with the, my past behind me. You know, how could somebody like me be this light to other people and i was struggling real hard in the easter of 2010 the bible opened up to me to john 8 12 i read that verse and i understood that i didn't have to worry about what was in the rearview mirror it was all looking straight ahead today and, and that's the same way of everything in life that we do today i hear it man i see that new testament yes sir yeah that's beautiful man. and that's the reason the truck's named new testament is you know uh when i bought the truck everybody asked me hey are you gonna name it this and that and we were sitting there at the kitchen table and I picked my head up and I said, there's no better name for it than New Testament. And I said, New Testament was what helped me, what brought me where I'm at. There's no better name for this truck than New Testament because this ain't my truck. This is God's truck. I just get the privilege of driving the wheel of it. It all belongs to him. Hey, I love it, man. Yeah, anything else you want to let the people know? Show uh, you know, there's a lot of upgrades that we've done to this truck. I mean, as far as the, the fenders and the light bars and, you know, Everybody asks me all the time, why do I have John 8, 12 on the back of my truck? Why don't I put the Bible verse? The reason I don't put the Bible verse is if you read just the Bible verse, that might be all you read. But if I give you something to go and search, you might read what's before it or what's after it, and that might be what you're dealing with in your life. And that's the reason today that John 8, 12 is on the back of this truck. It's not just to be there. It's for people to look at and say, hey, I need to go look this up because... You know, we're all facing different times, different tribulations, different trials as we're truck drivers, uh, firefighters, and uh, uh, police officers, and everything that we do in life. And nobody knows what anybody's going through in a day. But how great is it to know that you see something like this and you open your phone up and know you're not in you're not in darkness. If you're a child of his, you're in light, and you got somebody walking with you, before you. I mean, that's that reinsurance that we gotta have every day of everything that we do. Gotcha. No, that's beautiful, man. 
That's beautiful. Yeah, no, I, I love this interview, man. This is a, a legendary interview. I could, I know that I'll touch some people in these hard times. You know, any last words that you'd like to leave people with? The best thing that I'd like to leave people with is there's a lot of people that are going to doubt you. There's a lot of people that are going to put you down. But don't let them write your story. You got the ink pen. You got the book. You write the story the way you want it to be wrote because you're the one telling it. And if you'll write it the way you're supposed to, the story will be the way it's supposed to be in the end, the right way. Because if you let somebody else write it, they're telling their version of it. So all in all, honestly, at the end of the day, it's write your story the way that you want it to be told. Don't let someone else tell it for you. Hey, easy, right? Easy. Mm -hmm.